Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Mindy with Mindy Egan Design and today I'm going to be showing you how I created this card using the Soul Fly stamp set from Neat and Tangled. So here's the stamp set. It's got this really nice big image on there with some clouds and really cute sentiments. That's the Soul Fly stamp set and I also have the coordinating dies that match them as well. So I'm starting out by doing my Copic coloring for the image. I'm using Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. This is my personal choice. I really love uh, how the color soaks into the cardstock. I know some people don't as it may take more ink than uh, other cardstocks, but I really like it. I like the blending of it. So that's just uh, my personal taste. What I started out with is the YR23 as my darkest color. I am one that I just jump right into it. I uh, just start with my darkest color first and work with it. So I laid out some dark images to the back of the animal. So on the back of the neck, behind the arms, uh, a little bit on the back side of the arm because I'm visioning them as the sunlight being in front of them. So I want my shadows to be towards the back. And then I blend out with a Y15, Y11, and Y00 as my lightest color. And what I typically like to do in most cases is color it twice. So I'm not real worried how it's blending on my first run. I come back in and once I do my second run with all of those colors, it blends out a lot smoother. And that giraffe actually, I did speed the video up, but it did go pretty quick just because the areas are kind of small. So then I'm coming in with my browns and I'm using the E79, E25, and E33. I added the darkest color uh, to the hair, was it the hair or the mane of the giraffe, to the closest part uh, to the neck, and then blended that out. And for the spots, I added my darkest color to the furthest part of the spot away from my light source, which, like I said, I'm thinking that they're flying towards a light source. Hope that made sense for you, but I kept the darkest parts towards the left-hand side of the spots. And then for the muzzle, I did E97, E11, and E00, just to give that some quick color. Now for my elephant, I went with the cool grays, and that is C5, C3, and C1. I added my darkest colors to the back side of the head, uh, on the bottom part of the jaw, a little bit under the trunk, and then of course on its back and under part of its arm. And then I'm going to come in and blend that out with a C3 on all of those, adding a little bit of shading where that nook is, where the trunk connects to the face, just because since the trunk is lifted up, I'm thinking it would cast a little bit of a shadow. And then blending out with the C1. I was trying to stay a little light-handed on here. I tend to go really dark, so I was trying really hard not to have a dark gray elephant. I wanted to keep it uh, light and simple, so I was trying to be real minimal on my darkest color. And that was my second run I did, since I like to color them twice. And I blended into the ear a little bit with the C1, because that will help me with my pink color here, which is the R30. That just helped blend it out a little bit better. And now for the plane, uh, I actually only did, I only did one layer of coloring since this is such a big object and there's quite a bit of space. I only did one layer on most of it. So I'm doing some of these parts here. Now this is all personal preference if you wanted to color these kind of a metalish color or uh, make it just a really colorful plane. I went with N6, N4, and N2. And I did the darkest parts uh, for the bottom of the plane. I did it uh, what would be kind of closest to the ground. And then on the propeller, I did it on the back side of the propeller, so on that left-hand side. And then just blending out with the N4 and N2. And that part went really quick. Then I can come in and I'll make this a little bit colorful. I knew I kind of was going to have a, a blue background, so I was trying to keep my colors pretty consistent. 
So I did parts of this with a red, which is the R89. It's a really deep red. R39, R27, and R24. And once again, I put that darkest color on that first section. I did it where right next to the seam of where my metal piece met. And then the back side of the wing of the plane and blending those out. And I'm going to try and keep my shadows uh, pretty much on the seams of where it's meeting another part of the plane. I didn't want to overdo it with shadowing. I just wanted to come in here. I just wanted to give it a little bit of depth. I didn't want to go too crazy with it. So I just did that little bit there and then blended it all out with the R39, 27, and 24. And like I said, since this was such a larger part, larger section to color, I just did the one layer and just kind of made sure to go over the previous color a little bit to blend that out better. And so the R89 there you see went to the very bottom of the plane for that dark shadow and then blended it out. And I'm just going to fill in a little bit by the propeller. So for the last part of the plane for these stripes and the one other section of the plane, I'm doing a blue. And I actually started with a couple other colors, but I ended with B28, 26, and 23. I had grabbed um, a 23 actually on accident, and that kind of shifted my train of thought. So I ended with the B28 as my darkest color, the B26 as my mid-tone, and then the B23. And I actually went over the entire section of those blue areas with the B23, just to kind of give it a wash and blend that out a little bit better. And then the B28, I just popped back in to deepen that shadow just a little bit. And that is such an adorable image, and it's a great focal point for a card. Now, for my little bluebird, I didn't actually end up using this, but I'm leaving in the coloring for you. And I just did BG05 and BG02 just to throw in a little bit of color there and keeping the shadow towards the back of the bird. Then I'm going to use the coordinating die to die cut this out. So I'm just lining this up in place, holding that down with some post-it tape, and I'll run that through my die cut machine. Now I'm going to be creating an ink blended background of sort. So I'm using the Salty Ocean Squeezed Lemonade and Ripe Persimmon. And this is on a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock that I had just trimmed down to four and a quarter by five and a half. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do yet at this point. I just knew I kind of wanted the ink blended background as like a sunset-ish looking. So I did the right persimmon first, threw on some color, and I was going to use the squeeze lemonade and I accidentally dipped it in the right persimmon. So I did a quick switch and grabbed a giant sponge dauber uh, to use my squeeze lemonade. And I'm throwing on that color in the middle, just kind of going light handed. I didn't want to go crazy dark on this. So I'm just doing it really light. And then once I have the color on there, I can kind of gauge where I need to blend it out more. And this is the salty ocean. Throwing on the bottom, I was thinking as this is like maybe water in the background. Once I have the salty ocean on, I go back over my line and blend out that salty ocean with the squeeze lemonade. It will give a little bit of a green hue. So I didn't add a lot. I didn't really want green in there. I just wanted to kind of blend those lines out so it wasn't so harsh. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to take this stitched circle and die cut out the circle. And that is going to be my background piece for my little critters in their plane. I also took um, the cloud stencil, or not cloud stencil, cloud die from this coordinating die set. You can stamp out the clouds, but I decided to just use them as a die itself. So I just cut those from white cardstock, and I did quite a few of them. You get three different sizes that are in there. You could also stamp these and heat emboss them on a background. And I'm just kind of scattering them around, having some off the edge of my card to kind of give it a more... Um, realistic effect. I didn't want them in any sort of pattern. And once I have those where I like them, I can come in and start attaching these. So I'll just use some quick liquid glue in my tweezers and add these around my circle on my card. And some are even tucked under the circle. 
And my cardstock that I'm using for my sky, this is going to be sea glass cardstock from Gina K Designs. I just thought it really matched with the colors that I had chose for the ink blending, and it was a really nice light blue for my sky background. Then I'll go through and just trim off the edges of those clouds that were hanging off. Line up my ink blended circle piece. Make sure that's kind of centered up. And my poor critters, I had done something else with the background and I decided against it. I didn't like it, so I switched it up and it already had adhesive on the back. So I just quick added a little bit of liquid glue uh, for a little bit more reinforcement there to attach to my ink blended circle. Now I want to pop this up for a dimension. So I'm going to take my Big Mama roll of foam tape and add this to the back of my circle. And what I like to do with my foam tape there, you might see I have a little square kind of stuck to the side, is if I'm trimming down pieces to fit a certain card, I never throw any of my foam tape away. I stick it right on the edge of my foam tape you see there, and then that goes on my shelf. That way they come in handy. You never know where you'll need just a little sliver of foam tape to add to a section like that propeller I wanted to have popped off. I didn't want it to get bent if I mail this. So I had a little spare piece there that I just added to it uh, to help support that a little bit. Then I can go ahead and remove the backing on all of that and attach that to the center of my card. And then this will just give it some really nice dimension. It's a simple card, but I was really happy with this how this turned out. Like I said, I had tried something different before and I wasn't happy, so I'm so glad I changed this up with the clouds in the background. Now for a sentiment, I'm going to use the sky's the limit, and I'm going to heat emboss this on black cardstock with some white embossing powder. I prepped my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool just to remove any uh, fingerprints or any stickiness that might be there. That way the embossing powder will only stick where I want it to. And I can tap it off and hit it with my heat tool. And I really like how this uh, black cardstock really kind of pops off of the card. And then I just trimmed everything down into a thin strip and added some foam to one piece of it and liquid glue to the other so that it's going to be in the same, it's not going to be higher than my ink blended background. And I just had to add a little sparkle so I'm taking a Nouveau shimmer pen and I'm adding that to my metal pieces of my plane. So this could be for a boy or a girl as a card and maybe a boy doesn't want sparkle on a plane but I do. <laughs> so I did that. And I just had to bring in these sequins. This is from Neat and Tangled. This is the Like Magic Sequence Pack. And I just added those around my image. So I really hope you enjoyed today's card, gave you some ideas uh, with a great background, really simple card. If you did enjoy it, I would appreciate a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you next time.